Hello everyone, this is Satya Prakash. Welcome to my channel. This is part 8 of Web API. In this session, we'll discuss what is the code we need to configure in our controller to retrieve data from SQL Server in SV.NET Web API and Entity Framework. So, please visit my part 7 of Web API that is how to set up the Entity Framework and SQL Server in SV.NET Web API. You can get this video in my playlist called SV.NET Web API Tutorial. So guys, here I have created the employee controller which is a, you know, API controller and I will add some code here and so here I will add the namespace of my, you know, this uh, class library that is of my web, web API coding project that is employee data access. So we need to uh, import this namespace that is uh, using employee. data access right and and close the close with semicolon and here inside the controller we need uh, we'll add some uh, get details methods uh, one get details is for uh, it will uh, show all the employee details and one get details that is overloaded version of get details uh, second get details with int id so it will filter the employee details as per the given uh, employee id so I all, I have the code here. No need to uh, write again to save the time. So I copy this course and go here and paste here. And I'll tell you everything uh, step by step what I done here, right? And here you can guys. Uh, I'll show you here. Uh, here I'll add some XML documents, right? I already have told you how to add the XML documents in Swagger UI. So please uh, go through the videos and here what I'll do that is employee get employee details right so this method it, it returns all the employee details so uh, I'll tell you everything step by step and here second get details it will what, what it does it will uh, return the employee data based on the ID uh, parameter right here we have one parameter here so uh, here I need to uh, employee data I need to mention get employee data get employee details uh, based on ID so here uh, I'll write something that is employee ID employee ID right okay so this is all done and it will reflect in my swagger ey documentation part so guys i'll tell you everything step by step here so uh, first method is for get details right so we have the get details which responds to http get var so this method is going to return a enumerable of employee data object right here employee data is nothing but our class it is similar to the uh, our table name which we already have created in uh, last videos right and this is the data uh, resides in, in our uh, employee date table okay and here the employee date is a generated uh, entity right it is the generated entity by the adio.net entity framework i will show you this edmx file so which I have created uh, in my last video so you can see here right the employee that is the uh, object a generated entity which is uh, uh, no generated by the adio.net entity framework when we have created the entity data model so the employee dat dat uh, employee dat table is uh, is the dat uh, you know database uh, table in the database is created earlier so employee dat table has properties corresponding to these columns like right? employee dat table in database right this one so that is the id first name last name gender and salary so I'll go to my employee controller and I'll show you, I'll go to right click on it. Go to definitions. So guys, here you can see 
the employee date has properties that is the say, uh, that is correspond is corresponds to the these columns in employee date table in database right the same uh, per, per properties you can see id first name last name gender and salary in database it is the same column name you can see here right id first name last name gender and salary okay now next one is uh, so i have created one instance of satya db entities class right and satya db entities is inherited from db contest class which is responsible for managing database uh, connection to retrieve the entities so if you we'll right click on it go to definitions and you can see here uh, this is inherited from the db contest class right and the satya db entities is the base name you can see here and uh, so this is all about Satya DB entities. We have, you know, created the instance of pro the purpose behind the creation of instance of Satya DB entities. And so this purpose of this code is is basically return uh, all return us a list of employees. So here I have write the code right. So return entities is the object of Satya DB entities the employee dates to list. So this means it will. Uh, this is basically a collection of properties which will return us a list of employees okay this method is completed and last get details with int id this is the overload version of get details with the id parameter so here i have created one method get method that is get details with the id parameter and which is going to respond to the uri which uh, which has got an id in it so here the return type is employee debt right and um, here i'll show you same way i have created the instance of satya db entities and here i have return entities dot employee debts dot uh, no fast or default and inside i have uh, e uh, i have write some link u right e such that e dot id equal to equal to id so whatever id is passed it will match to the id of my database and it will return the specific employee details here all right so uh, here i want to return one employee based on id value is given by the user right so next one is um, so adding the connection strings in web.config of web api project so guys here in web.config of my this web api coding uh, web api project here you can see the connection string is not there by default right here is connection string is not there so where is the connection string exists here so if you'll run the application then i I'll, I'll get an exception like uh, exceptions like no connection string named satya db entities could be found in application config file so this is because entity framework is looking for satya db entities connection string in the web.config file of web api project so this that means web api coding so satya db entities connection string is basically is actually in web app.config file of emp data access class library project so if, if you open this app.config file so this file resides in class library right employee data access so this contains the connection string of all the details that is the satya db connection satya db entities connection string details and my data source name and the db inside the table is resides right this is the connection string details is mentioned here in abdor config file but it, this is not present in web config file of web api project so what i'll do here I will include a copy of connection string in web.config file. So simply I just copy this connection string of app.config file. I'll go to web.config file. Right? And here I will place in uh in the web.config file uh after the app settings. So guys, here you can see I have placed the connection string inside the web.config file, right? here you can see here the same as in the update config of employee emp employee data access class library project so after this i will save these changes and build my solution
So guys, here you can see the build process is succeeded and after then I'll run my web API project here. So guys, here I will navigate to, you know, employee, uh, API and employee, right? This, because employee is the controller. So I will navigate to here, employee. So guys, here I can see all the employee details, right? You can see here. I can see all the employee details uh, as per my uh, table in my database. So I got all the employee details here, right? And next one is I will uh, uh, navigate to a API employee and uh, slash, uh, you know, slash and one. So this is the ID of employee I passed here because in our next, in our second get details method, it contains the ID parameter so that I passed here employee ID one. So it should get all the details of employee whose ID is one, right? In, I'll press enter here. So guys, here we can see that employee ID of one, it, it is showing uh, expected, right? So that means uh, whatever we have created the employee controller and it has two get details with uh, it returns all the employee details and it returns employee details whose ID based on ID parameter, right? Okay, now what I will do here, I'll check the same response using Swagger UI. So I'll navigate to, you know, Swagger UI index. So guys, here I can see my controller that is employee controller. So I cl click this one I and I can see the XML comments, right? Uh, for get details, it shows get employee details and for get details with ID, it shows the get employee details based on ID because we have added some XML comments for better uh, description of the particular HTTP get methods, right? So I'll check here first get details. So I click this one. And here I'll click on try it out. So guys, here I can see the request URL that APA employee and response body. I can see all the details, all the employee details, right? And response code is 200 OK. And so I'll collapse this one and check the next get details with ID parameter. And here, guys, guys, you can see the parameter value is showing and the description is employee id because we have mentioned here employee id in the xml comments so what i'll do i'll pass one parameter for i want to check employee id of one after then i'll click on try it out so here guys you can see that request url is uh, api employee slash one and response body it shows the employee id of one right and response code is 200. So uh, in this way, we can check uh, the request and response using Swagger UI as well as by default using the browser. So I'll go to my close this one instance of uh, browser. And I'll go to my presentation here. So this is the uh, points we already have discussed in this video. So this is my YouTube channel, subscribe and share it to get the updated knowledge on .NET, .NET Core, C Sharp, SQL Server, Web API, uh, Angular, DevOps and uh, GitHub. So what we have learned today in this video is uh, what is the code we have 
added in our web api controller and add the connection string inside the web.config of web api project and we already have checked the request and response using swagger documentation part so this is for today guys thank you for listening have a great day